Good morning everyone. Our topic for today is about ethics in nursing research. Okay, in any discipline that involves research with human beings or animals, researchers must address ethical issues. Ethical concerns are especially prominent in nursing research because the line of the um, demarcation between what constitutes the expected practice of nursing and the collection of research data can sometimes get blurred. Furthermore, ethics can create particular challenges because ethical requirements sometimes conflict with the need to produce high-quality evidence for practice. Okay, this lesson discusses the major ethical principles that should be considered in reviewing studies. Okay, the following objectives guides our discussion for today. Number one, understand the potential for ethical dilemmas stemming from conflicts between ethics and requirements for high-quality research evidence. Number two, identify the three primary ethical principles articulated in the Belmont Report and the important dimensions encompassed by each. Number three, identify procedures for adherence or adhering to ethical principles and protecting study participants. And lastly, given sufficient information, evaluate the ethical dimensions of a research report. Okay, of um, Declaration of Helsinki on the year 1964 is a statement about ethical principles initially applied to medical research but which now guides all types of the research. Okay, of the three core principles, the most important is the respect of people or persons where the participants welfare takes precedence over interests of the researcher's society or science. Safeguards to participants are paramount and include strategies to mitigate potential harms related to emotional well-being impact on employment, financial and social status, and more. Okay, the second core is the principle um, is benefits. Okay, where researchers should strive to maximize the benefits of research for the wider society while minimizing the risk to research participants. And the final core principle is the justice. In this case, um, researchers should ensure that research is complete, uh, conducted fairly and in a way that does not exploit or disadvantage any participants. Okay, what are the ethical dilemma in conducting the research? Okay, research question number one. Okay, are nurses equally empathic in their treatment of male and female patients in the ICU? The ethical dilemma is ethics required that participants be made aware of their role in the study yet if the researchers or the researcher informs nurses participating in this study that their degree of empathy in treating male and female participants will be scrutinized will their behavior be normal if the nurse's usual behavior is altered because of the known presence of research observers then the fi uh, the findings will not be valid okay for the research question number two what are the coping mechanisms of the parents whose children have a terminal illness okay to answer this question the researcher may need to probe into the psychological state of the parents at a vulnerable time such probing could be painful and even traumatic yet knowledge of the parents Coping mechanisms might help to design more effective ways of dealing with parents' grief and stress. For the research, question number three, does a new medication prolong life in patients with cancer? Okay, the ethical dilemma, the best way to test the effectiveness of an intervention is to administer it to some participants with a uh, but withhold it from others to see the groups have different outcomes however if the intervention is untested like for the new drug okay the group receiving the intervention may be exposed to harmful side effects on the other hand the group 
not receiving the drug may be denied a beneficial treatment. For the research question number four, what is the process by which adult children adapt to the day-to-day -day stresses of caring for a parents with Alzheimer's disease? Okay, in a qualitative study, which would be appropriate for this question, a researcher may become so closely involved with participants that they become willing to share secrets. Okay, interviews can become confessions, sometimes of unseemly or even illegal behavior. In this example, suppose a woman admitted to physically abusing her mother. Okay, how can the researcher report such information to the authorities without undermining a pledge of confidentiality? And if the researcher divulged the information to appropriate authorities, how can a pledge of confidentiality be given in a good faith to other participants? As these examples uh, suggest, researchers are sometimes in a bind. A bind okay? The goal is to de develop the highest quality evidence for practice using the best methods available, but they must also adhere to rules for protecting human rights. Another type of dilemma may, al may arise if the nurse researchers face conflict of interest situations in which the expected behavior as nurses conflicts with the standard behavior of researchers. Okay, example, deviating from standard research protocol to give needed assistance to a patient. It is precisely because of such conflicts and dilemmas that codes of ethics have been developed to guide the effort of the researchers. Okay, what are the uh, ethical principles for protecting study participants? The Belmont Report articulated the three primary ethical principles on which standards of ethics conduct in research are based on the beneficence, respect for human dignity, and the justice. Okay, we briefly discuss this principle and then describe procedures uh, researchers adapt to comply with these principles. Okay, number one is the beneficence. One of the most fundamental ethical principles is um, in research is that of beneficence, okay, which imposes a duty on researchers, or researchers to minimize harm and to maximize benefits. Okay, human res uh, research should be intended to produce benefits for participants themselves or a situation that is more common for the other individuals or society as a whole. Okay, this principle covers the multiple dimensions. Okay, the right to freedom from harm and discomfort or the non-maleficence. Okay, researchers have an obligation to avoid, prevent, or minimize harm in studies with human. Exposing study participants to experiences that results in serious or permanent Harm clearly is unacceptable. Ethical researchers must be prepared to terminate the research if there is reason to suspect that continuation would result in two injury, death, or undue distress to study participants. Protecting human beings from physical harm is often straightforward, but it is not an easy as easy to address the psychological consequences of participating in a study which can be subtle. For example, participants may be asked questions about their personal views, weaknesses, and fears. Such queries might lead people to reveal sensitive personal in, uh, information. The point is not that researchers should refrain from asking questions, but rather than they need to be aware of the nature of the intrusion on people's psyches. Participants must not be the subjected to unnecessary risk of harm or discomfort and their participant or participation in research must be essential to achieving scientifically and society, uh, societally important aims that could not otherwise be realized. In research with humans, harm and discomfort can take many forms like they can be physicals like the injury or emotions like 
stress, socials like loss of social supports or financial loss of wages. Okay, ethical researchers must must use strategies to minimize all types of harm and discomfort, even ones that are temporary. Okay, the right to protecting from exploitation. Okay, participants need to be assured that the participations or information they might provide will not be used against them in many way or in any way. For example, a person describing his or her economic circumstances to the researcher should not be exposed to the risk of losing public health benefits. A person reporting drug abuse should not fear exposure to criminal authorities. Okay, the study participants enter into a special relationship with researchers and it is crucial that this relationship not be exploited. Exploitation may be overt and malicious, like for example sexual exploitation, but it might also be more subtle. Okay, getting participants to provide additional information in a one-year uh, follow-up interviews without having warmed them of this possibility at the outset because nurse researchers may have a nurse patients in addition to the researcher participants relationship special care may need to be exercised to avoid exploiting the bind okay patients consent to participate in a study may result from their underlying or understanding of the researcher's role as nurse not as researcher in qualitative research the risk of exploitation may become especially acute because the psychological distance between investigators and participants typically declines as the study progresses okay example of a therapeutic research experiences okay participants in Bex on the year 2005 studies on the birth trauma and post traumatic stress disorder or the PTSD express a range of benefits they derive from email exchanges with Beck. Here is what one informant voluntarily shared. You thank me for everything you are in your email and I want to thank you for caring. For me, it means a lot that you have taken an interest in this subject and are taking the time and effort to find out more about PTSD. For someone to even acknowledge this condition means a lot for someone who have suffered from it. Okay, let's move with the respect for human dignity. Okay, respect for human dignity is the second ethical principle articulated in the Belmont report. This principle includes the right to self-determination and the right for full disclosure. So let's find first the right to self-determination. Okay, researchers should treat participants as autonomous agents, okay, capable of controlling their own activities. The principle of self-determination means that prospective participants have the right to decide voluntarily whether to participate in a study without risking penalty or prejudicial treatment. It also means that people have the right to ask questions or to refuse to give information and to withdraw from the study. A person's right to self-determination includes freedom from coercion or any um, of any type. Coercion involves explicit or implicit threats of penalty from failing to participate in a study or excessive rewards from agreeing to participate. The obligation to protect people from coercion requires careful thought when researchers are in a position of authority, control, or influence over potential participants, as might be the case in a nurse relation or nurse patient relationship. The issue of coercion may require scrutiny in other situations as well. For example, okay, a generous monetary incentive okay, offered to encourage the participant of an economically disadvantaged group, like for the homeless, might be considered mildly coercive because such incentives may 
place undue pressure on prospective participants. The right to full disclosure. The principle of respect for human dignity encompasses people's right to make informed voluntarily decisions about study participants um, which requires full disclosure. The right to self-determination and the right to full disclosures are the two main elements on which informed consent okay, is based. Suppose we are testing the hypothesis um, that the high school student with a high absentee rates Okay, full disclosure means that the researcher has fully described the nature of the study, the person's right to refuse participants or participations, the researcher's responsibility and likely risk, likely risk and benefits. Okay, the right to self-determinations and the right to full disclosures are the two major elements on which informed consent is based. Okay, full disclosure can sometimes create two types of bias. The biases affecting the accuracy of the data and the biases reflecting um, sample recruitment problems. Suppose we are testing the hypothesis that the high school student with the high absentee rates are more likely to be substance abusers than students with, the high, uh, with good attendance. If we approach potential participants and fully explain the purpose of the study, some students like would refuse to participate and non-participation would be selective or biased. Okay, students who are substance abuser, the group of primary um, interest, might be at least likely to participate moreover by knowing the research questions. Those who do partici uh, participate might not give candid responses. In such situations, full disclosure could undermine the study. One technique that the researcher um, sometimes used in such situations is covert data collection or concealment. Okay, collecting data without participants' knowledge and thus without their consent, this might happen. For example, if the researcher wanted to observe people's behavior in a real-world setting and was concerned that doing so openly would result in changes in the very behavior of interest, researchers might choose to obtain the information through concealed method, such as by videotaping with hidden equipment or observing while pretending to be engaged in other activity. Okay, a more controversial technique is the use of deception. Okay, deception can involve deliberately withholding information about the study or providing participants with false information. For example, in studying high school students' use of drugs, we might describe the research as a study of students' health practices, okay, which is a mild form of misinformation. Deception and concealment are problematic ethically because they interfere with participants' right to make truly informed decisions about personal cost and benefits of participation. Some people agree, argue that deception is never justified. Other, other, however, believe that if the study involves minimal risk to subjects and if there are anticipated benefits to society, the deception may be justified to enhance the validity of the findings. Full disclosure has emerged as a concern in connection with data, uh, with data collection over the internet. For example, analyzing the content of the message posted to the chat groups or in the listservs, okay, the issue is whether such messages can be used as data without the author's consent. Some researchers believe that um, anything posted electronically is in the public domain and therefore can be used for research without formal consent. Other, however, feels that the same ethical standard must apply in cyberspace research and that electronic researchers must carefully protect the rights of individuals who are participants in virtual communities. 
Various protective strategies have been proposed, for example, that researchers negotiate um, their entry into, e, um, into an electronic community such as a group chat and the list owner um, before collecting data. Justice. Okay, the third broad principle articulated in the Belmont Report concerns the justice. Okay, which includes the participant's right to fair treatment and the right to privacy. So, the right to fair treatment. Okay, one aspect of the um, of the justice principle concerned the equitable distribution of benefits and burdens of research. The selection of study participants should be based on the research requirements and not on the vulnerability or compromised position of certain people. Historically, subject selections had been a key ethical concern with many researchers selecting group team to have lower social standing like for the poor people, prisoners, and mentally retarded as study participants. The principle of justice imposes particular obligations toward individuals who are unable to protect their own interests, example for the dying pa uh, patients, to ensure that they are not exploited for the advance. Um, advancement of knowledge. Distributive justice also imposes duties to um, neither neglect nor discriminate against individuals and groups who may benefit from advances in research. During the early 1990s, there was evidence that women and minorities were being unfairly excluded from many clinical studies in the United States. This leads to the promulgations of the regulations updated on the year 2001 requiring the researchers who seek find, uh, funding from the National Institute of Health um, include women and minorities as study participants. The regulations also require researchers to examine whether clinical interventions have differential effects. Okay, example whether benefits are different for men than for women. The right to fair treatment encompasses other obligation. It means that researcher must treat people who dis decline to participate in the study or who withdraw from it in a no prejudicial manner. They must honor all agreements made uh, with participants, including the payment of the promise um, stipends, okay, demonstrate sensitivity to or respect for the belief, habits, and lifestyle of the people from different backgrounds or culture, and afford participants courteous and tactful treatment at all times. The right to privacy, participants have to expect that any data they provide will be kept in strictest confidence okay virtually all research with humans involves intruding into personal lives Re um, researchers should ensure that their research is not most intrusive than it needs to be and that participants privacy is maintained throughout the study republic act number 10173 and act protecting individual personal information in information and communication system in the government and the private sectors creating for this purpose a national privacy commission and for other purposes okay it is the policy of the state to protect the fundamental human right of privacy of communication while ensuring free flow of information to provide innovation and growth the state recognizes the vital role of information and communications technology in nation building and its inherent obligations to ensure that personal information in information and communication systems in the government and the private sectors are secured and fully protected okay what are the procedures for protecting study participants now that you are familiar with the fundamental ethical principles for conducting the research Okay, you need to understand the procedures the researchers follow to so adhere to them. It is uh, these procedures that should be evaluated in critiquing the ethical aspects of a study. Okay, 
risks and benefits. Um, risk benefits assessments. One strategy that researchers use to protect the participants is to conduct a risk benefits assessment. Such an assessment is designed to determine whether the benefits of participating um, in a study are in line with the cost, um, be they financial, physical, emotion, or social, um, whether the risk to benefit ratio is accepted. Okay. Here is the potential benefit and risk of um, risk for or of research to participants. Okay, the major potential benefits to to participants. Okay, access to potentially benefits interventions that might otherwise be unavailable to them. Comfort in being able to discuss their situation or problem with a friendly objective person. Increase knowledge about themselves on their conditions either through opportunity for introspections and self-reflections or through direct interactions with the researchers. Escape from a normal routine excitement of being part of the study. Satisfy that the information they provide may help others with similar problems or conditions. Direct monetary and or material gain through stipends or other incentives. Okay, what are the major potential risks to participants? The physical harm, including the anticipated side effects, like for example, you are conducting new drugs, okay, or new vaccines, physical discomfort, fatigue, or boredom, okay, physic, um, psychological or emotional distress resulting from self-disclosure, introspection, fear of the unknown, discomfort with the strangers, fear of the eventual repercussions, anger or embarrassment at the type of questions being asked. Social risk such as the risk of stigma, adverse effect on personal relationship, loss of status. Also, the loss of privacy, the loss of time, monetary costs like for example, transportation, childcare, and time loss from work. The general guideline is that the degree is risk to be taken by the participants by the participant should never exceed the potential humanitarian benefits of the knowledge to be gained. That's the selection of the significant topic that has that has the potential to improve patient care is the first step in ensuring that research is ethical. Okay, all research involves such risk okay but in many cases the risk is minimal minimal risk is defined as a risk expected to be no greater than those ordinarily encountered in daily life or during routine physical and or psychological tests or procedure when the risks are not minimal okay researchers may proceed with caution taking every step possible to reduce risk and maximize the benefits example of ongoing risk benefits assessments like for the Carlson, um, Carlson and colleagues in the year 2007 discussed the methodological and ethical issues relating to the conduct of the interviews with people who have brain damage, the need for ongoing vigilance and attention to cues about risks and benefits was noted. The researchers state that one interview had to be interrupted because the participant was displaying signs of distress. After the interview, however, the participants declined counseling. The express gratitude to have, to having or for having had the opportunity to discuss the experience. Okay, here is the example of a consent form. Okay, let's um, talk about the informed consent. One particular important procedure for safeguarding the participants and protecting their right to self-determination involves obtaining their informed consents. Okay, as I uh, na-flash ko kanina, yun yung example ng ating informed consent. Okay, informed consent means that the participants have adequate information regarding the research, comprehends the information, and have the power of free choice. Okay, or the autonomy, enabling them to consent to or decline participations voluntarily. Okay, researchers usually document the informed consent process by having participants sign a consent form, an example which is presented kanina. Okay, this form includes information about the study, purpose, specific expectations regarding participant or participation. Example, how much time will be required, the one 
voluntary nature of the participa uh, participations and the potential cost and the benefits. Example of the informed consents, Esperat and the co-researchers in the year 2007 studied the health behaviors of low-income pregnant women in Texas. Consent forms were prepared in both English and Spanish. A bilingual research assistant explained the need for the consent form and determined the literacy level of all participants. The research assistants provided any needed assistance in completing the said form. Okay. Researchers really obtain written informed consents when the primary means of data collection is through self-administered question. Okay, researchers generally assume implied consent. When we say implied consent, so pag sinagot nila yung, um, yung, yung survey, that's or without any asking for the consent, tapos sinagot nila, then sinabit nila sa'yo, that's what we call implied consent, which means they are consenting. Okay, that the return of the completed questionnaire reflects that the respondents voluntarily consent to participate. In a qualitative study, consent may be viewed as an ongoing transactional process referred to as the process consent. Okay, in process consent, researcher continuously negotiate the consent, um, allowing the participants to play a collaborative role in decision-making process regarding their ongoing participation okay example of process consent okay tracy and colleagues colleagues in the year 2007 conducted a three-round longitudinal study for children's emerging perspectives and experiences of cigarette smoking parents and children consented to the children's uh, participation at each round consent to continue participating in the study was reconfirmed Confidentiality procedure is study participants have the right to expect that any data they provide will be kept in strict, uh, strictest confidence. Participants' right to privacy is protected through various confidentiality procedure. Anonymity. Okay, anonymity, the most secure means okay, of protecting confidentiality occurs when even researchers cannot link participants to their data. For example, if questionnaires were distributed to the group of nursing home residents and were returned without any identifying information on them, response said, uh, responses would be anonymous. As another example, if the researcher reviewed hospital records from which all identifying information such as name, address, social security number, and so forth has been expunged, anonymity would again protect patients or participants right to privacy okay example of anonymity okay hofek and colleagues in the year 2008 distributed an anonymous questionnaire to learn about the people's knowledge and belief about the relationship between genetics and smoking study participants who were staff and visitors of a healthcare uh, facility return completed questionnaires to a secure collecting box at the facility or via postage paid mail. Confidentiality in the absence of anonymity. Okay, when anonymity is impossible, appropriate confidentiality procedures need to be implemented. A promise of confidentiality is a pledge that any information participants provide will not be publicly reported in a manner that identifies them and will not be made accessible to the others. Researchers generally develop elaborate confidentiality procedures. This includes securing confidentiality assurance from um, everyone involved in collecting or uh, analyzing research data, maintaining identifying information in locked files to which uh, few people have access substituting identification or ID number for participants name on the study record and computer files to prevent any accidental breach of confidentiality and lastly reporting only aggregate data for groups of participants or taking steps to disguise a person's identity in a research report okay 
tip as a uh, as a mean enhancing both individual and institutional privacy research report frequently avoid giving explicit information about the locally of the study okay for example a report might say that um, data were collected in 200 bed private nursing home without mentioning the name of the location Anonymity is really possible in qualitative study because qualitative researchers become thoroughly involved with the participants. Okay, confidentiality is especially salient in qualitative studies because due to their in-depth nature, they or there may be a greater invasion of privacy than in quantitative research. Okay, researchers who spend time in party participants home may or for example have difficulty segregating the public behavior participants are willing to share from the private behavior that unfolds unwittingly during data collection a final issue many qualitative researcher face is adequately disguising participants in their reports to avoid a breach of confidentiality because the number of respondents is small and because rich descriptive information is presented qualitative researchers need to take extra precautions to safeguard participants identity this may mean more than simply use of fictitious name it may also uh, mean withholding information about Key characteristics of informants such as the age and the occupation. It should be noted that there are situations in which confidentiality can create tensions between researchers and the legal authorities, especially if the study participants are involved in critical or criminal activities such as substance abuse. To avoid the possibility or force involuntary disclosure of sensitive research information, Okay, researchers in the United States can apply for a Certificate of Confidentiality okay, from the National Institute of Health. A certificate allows researchers to refuse to disclose identifying information on the study participants in a civil, criminal, administrative, or legislative proceedings of the federal states and the local level. Okay. Debriefings and referrals. Researchers can show their respect for study participants and proactively minimize emotional risk by carefully attending to the nature of the interactions they have been or they have with them okay for example researchers should always be gracious and polite phrase questions tactfully and be sensitive to cultural and linguistic diversity okay there are also more formal strategies that researchers can use to communicate their, res um, their respect and concerns for participants' well-being. For example, it is sometimes advisable to offer debriefing sessions after data collection is completed to permit participants to ask questions or air complaints. Okay, debriefing is especially important when the data collections have been stressful or when ethical guidelines have to be bent or if any deception was used example of the briefing is okay son um, son um, Gren and colleagues on the year 2006 studied the strategies that palliative um, cancer nurses used to avoid being emotionally overloaded okay they conducted in-depth interviews with 46 nurses and after each interview, we made sure that the participants were doing well and we assess possible needs for emotional support. Okay, researchers can do demonstrate their interest in participants by offering to share study findings with them. Okay, once the data have been analyzed or by mailing them a summary. Okay, finally, in some situations, Researchers may need to assist study participants by making referrals to appropriate health, social, and psychological services. Example of information sharing and referrals by the Bo Gardner, 2007, conducted a longitudinal study on how people incorporate an HIV or AIDS identity into their selves over time. Data were collected at three point over a four-year period okay participants were told that if they experience any psychological discomfort they could terminate the interview and would 
B. Given a referral to a social service agency. Following each wave of data collection, participants were sent copies of published papers with the results. Okay, treatment of vulnerable groups. Okay, vulnerable subjects may be incapable of giving fully informed consents like for mentally retarded people may be at risk or high risk of unintending side effects because of their circumstances like, like pregnant women. Adherence to ethical standards is often straightforward. Okay, the rights um, of special vulnerable groups, however, may need to be protected through additional procedures and heightened sensitivity. Okay, among the groups that um, should be considered as being vulnerable are the following. We have the children. Okay, legally and ethically, children do not have the competence to give informed consent and so the consent of children's parents or guardians should be obtained. However, it is appropriate, especially if the child is at least three years old, to obtain the child's um, assent, assent as well. Assent refers to the child affirmative agreement to participate. If the child is developmentally mature enough to understand the basic of information consent like a 12-year-old, researchers should obtain written consent from the child as well as the evidence of respect for the child's right to self-determinations. Uh, Number two, mentally or emotionally disabled people. Okay, individuals whose disability makes it impossible for them to weigh the risks and benefits of participation and make informed decisions like, for example, people affected with cognitive impairment, mental illness, coma, and so on. Okay, also cannot legally provide informed consent. In such cases, researchers should um, obtain the risk, uh, written consents of a legal guardian. Severely ill or physically disabled people, okay, for patients who are very ill or undergoing certain treatments, like for example, uh, mechanical ventilation, it might be necessary to access their ability to make reasons um, decisions about study participations. Another issue is that a certain disabilities, especially procedure for obtaining consent may be required. For example, if the people who cannot read or write or who have a physical impairment preventing them from writing alternative procedures for documenting informed consent, like for example, videotaping, the consent proceedings uh, should be used. For a, a terminally ill, okay, terminally ill people can seldom expect to benefits uh, personally from research and thus the risk to benefits ratio needs to be carefully assessed. Researchers must also uh, take steps to ensure that if the terminally ill do participate in a study, their health care and comfort are not compromised. Institutionalized people, nurses often conduct studies with hospitalized and institutionalized people who might feel that their uh, treatment would be jeopardized by failure to cooperate. Inmates of prisons and correctional facilities who have lost their autonomy in many uh, um, spheres of activity may similarly feel constraints in their ability to give free consent. Researchers studying institutionalized group need to be emphasized the voluntary nature of the participations. Okay, for the pregnant women, the U.S. government has issued stringent addition requirement of um, governing research with the pregnant women and the fetuses. Okay, in the U.S. or in the United States, codes of federal regulation 2005 subpart B. This requirement rep, uh, reflects a desire to safeguard both the pregnant women and maybe at the heightened physical and um, psychological risk. And the fetus who cannot give informed consent, the regulation stipulate that the pregnant women cannot be involved in the study unless the study purpose is to meet the woman's health needs and risk to her and the fetus are minimal. Okay, example of the research with a vulnerable group with the Kope Zuti and colleagues in the year 2007 evaluated the effectiveness of the advanced practice nurses consultations intervention in reducing the use of restrictive side rails in nursing homes. Residents provided their own consent to participate if they were able to do so. For those who were not able, the residents 
um, surrogate decisions maker provided the consent. Okay, what are the other ethical issues? Okay, in, in discussing ethical issues re relating to the conduct of the nursing research, we have given primary considerations to the protection of human study participants. Two other ethical issues also deserve mentions, the treatment of the animal in the research and the research misconduct. Okay, ethical issues in using animals in research. Okay, some nurses or nurse researchers who f focus on biophysical phenomena use animal rather than human beings as their subject. Despite some oppositions to animal research, it seems likely that researchers in health fields will continue to use animal to explore basic uh, physiologic uh, mechanisms and to test experimental interventions that could pose risk as well as offer benefits to human ethical considerations are clearly different for animals and human for example the concept of informed consent is not rele uh, relevant for animal subjects okay in the united states okay the public health service has issued a policy statement on the hum humane care and use of animals Okay, mostly recently amended in the year 2002. The guidelines articulate nine principles for the proper care and treatment of the animals used in the research. These principles should or cover such issues as the transport of the research animal alternative to using animal pain and distress in animal subject researcher qualifications, use of the appropriate anesthesia, and the euthanizing uh, euthanizing animals under certain conditions during or after the study okay Holsclaw and Hannerman on the year 2002 in discussing the use of animals in the nursing research noted several important considerations for example there may be compelling reasons to use an animal model not simply convenience or novelty also the study procedures should be humane well planned and well funded they noted that Animal studies are not necessarily less costly than those with human participants and they require serious ethical and scientific consideration to justify their use. Okay, example of the research with the animals by Brones and colleagues in the year 2005 studied the effect of behavioral rehabilitation training following transient global cerebral ischemia on dentate um, gyrus urogenesis using 72 adult male rats okay they reported that all efforts were made to minimize animal distress and to reduce the number of animals used the experimental proceed, uh, protocols were approved by an institutional animal care committee and were and uh, were in accordance with federal guidelines on the use of animals in research okay research misconduct Research misconduct, okay, as defined in the U.S. Public Health Service regulations that was revised in the year 2005, is the publication, falsifications, or plagiarism in proposing or conducting or reviewing research in the or in reporting res, uh, results. Research misconduct does not include honest errors. Okay, what is publication? Publication involves making up data or, its, or, or study results and reporting them. Falsification naman is involves manipulating research materials, um, equipments, or processes. It also involves changing or omitting data or distorting the, um, results such that the research is not accurately presented in reports. When you say plagiarism, involves the appropriate um, appropriation of someone's ideas result or words without giving due credit including the information obtained through the confidential reviews or research proposal or manuscript research misconduct covers many other issues including the improper improprieties of um, author authorship Poor data management, conflict of interest in appropriate uh, financial arrangements, okay, failure to comply with governmental regulations, and unauthorized use of confidential information. Okay, example of the research misconduct in the year 1999, the U.S. Office of Research Integrity ruled that the 
that a nurse who have been the data man um, who have been the data manager for the National Surgical Adjuvant, Adjuvant Breast and Bowel Project at a cancer center affiliated in the Norwest, Northwestern University engaged in scientific misconduct by intentionally falsifying or fabricating follow-up states and three patients enrolled in the clinical trial for breast cancer. Okay. Okay, research dishonesty and fraud are the major concern in nursing. Okay, although example of publicly exposed misconduct by nurse research are not common. Okay, for example, um, Jefford, on the year 2005, suits to identify and describe research environments that promote integrity in a study that focused on ethical issues faced by editor of nursing journals Freda and Kearney, on the year 2005, found that 68% of the 88 participants editor reported some type of ethical dilemma such as duplicate publication plagiarism or conflict of interest okay in thinking about the ethical aspects of a study you should also consider who the study participants were for example if the study involves vulnerable groups okay there should be more information about the protective procedures you might also need to attend to who the study participants were not. For example, there has been considerable concerns about the omissions of certain groups, for example, the minorities from clinical research, okay, critiquing the ethical aspects of the studies, okay, these are the guidelines for critiquing the ethical aspects, okay, was the study approved and monitored by the Institutional Review Board, Research Ethic Boards, or other similar ethics review committee where study participants subjected to any physical harm, discomfort, or psychological distress did the, did the researchers take um, appropriate step to remove or prevent harm? Did the benefits of the participants outweigh um, any potential risk or actual discomfort they experienced? Did the benefits to social outweigh the cost of the participants? Was any type of cons coercion or undue influence used to recruit for the participants? Okay, did they have the right to refuse to participate or to withdraw without penalty? Were participants um, deceived in any way? Were they fully aware of the participating in a study and did they understand the purpose of the nature of this research? Were appropriate informed consent procedures used with all participants? If not, were they valid or justified justifiable reasons? Were adequate steps taken to safeguard the privacy of the patients? How were they kept anonymous or confidential? Were privacy rule procedures followed? Okay, was the certificate of confidentiality obtained? Were vulnerable groups involved in the research? If yes, were special precautions um, instituted because of their vulnerable status? Were groups um, omitted from the inquiry without a justifiable rationale like for the women and minorities. Okay, that ends our discussions about ethics in the nursing research. Thank you for listening.